Listen, uh, Scott, I mean, I'm just a TV, so don't take, don't take, you know, my opinion too far. Uh, but <laughs> he's the best. His team can't <laughs> get over the hump. They can't win a major. They can't <laughs> consistently win T1 events. Welcome back, everybody, to The Breakdown. In essence, the twins of uh, eSports talk shows. I'm going to call it that for the time being. Great <laughs> to be back here, of course, with Sir Scoots. And yeah, I'm still in a box, everybody. Thanks for joining us as we've already covered a little bit of the news this week, mostly talking uh, about things, how, how things have been with Halo and, of course, the Lab 1v1. But, Scott, listen, uh, I think something this is probably close to your heart and definitely of interest to anybody who, uh, you know, is is keen on high-level FPS esports. We just had, uh, you know, a, a huge event over the uh, over the last few days, the Blast Premier World Final, right? Now, this is a $1 million prized event. It's on the same tier as, like, IEM uh, sort of, you know, or sort of EPL finals. Like, it is just under major tier in terms of prizing, in terms of prestige, in terms of the teams that were there. We talked a little bit in the last episode, Scott, about how impressed we are, I think, at what Blast are doing. And uh, I think this event was really no exception. Great combination of fantastic production value, great talent, and also some of the biggest teams in Counter-Strike going at it. Uh, big fan of this event, man. And uh, how much did you manage to catch? I, I caught quite a bit of it. I was, uh, you know, trying to double dip over the weekend, uh, watching me some Halo, mm -hmm, watching mm -hmm. me from Counter-Strike. And again, it reminded me, I'm like, what year is this right now? Again, we did give <laughs> props to Blast last week. They've come a long way from when they showed up as a TO um, in Counter-Strike. Um, from their formatting to what their stages look like, what their desk looks like, the people they hire. Uh, just amazing, amazing stuff. Um, and this was the culmination of kind of their their season of events, their world final. It was supposed to be in front of a, a crowd as well um, as yeah. the players in the building. They had to change their plans at the last minute and not have fans in the building to be safe. A bummer. But you know, sometimes like studio events with just talent and players run really smooth, really tight. You can do a lot of things you can't do in a big arena. Um, your money can be spent differently. So, you know, you, you, you obviously lose the luster and the yell and the scream of the crowd, but man, it does make some things way easier on production. And it, and it, it looked great. And again, one thing I gotta give them props for right away for, they finally, and not necessarily this event, but they finally got away with their black on black on black on black on black set. They had black Lucite desk on a black <laughs> shiny floor with a black backdrop. And it was just like, no! And, and they, they, yeah. Yeah, impressive. really nice. This silver gold thing they got. Oh, mm, chef's kiss blast. Um, good I'm stuff. about that. That always screams prestige to me, right? Black and gold, you know, like something, something about that is, is always royal to me. So, yeah, uh, I loved it. You know what I love about blast is that the tone man of their broadcast is uh, it's accessible it feels laid back the talent are, are a big part of this i think yes. right? i think fry's a great host and you know i was having yanko on uh, on any desk <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> it's, uh, it's incredible I, I had the pleasure of working uh quite a few counter-strike events with a few of these guys in, in sort of minor roles as like a you know, side stage host and stuff like that and uh they are really with some notable exceptions some of the most uh awesome people in the industry to work with so big shout out to them I love this. You see, you see this video? Uh, so obviously, oh, yeah. Astralis and Liquid uh, end up going head to head in this tournament. I just fucking got a kick out of this. <laughs> oh, man. So obviously, you know, pretty intimate camera shot here as teams are getting ready to walk out the tunnel. Uh, and the, we get some fucking interaction. We get some bad Fuck stuff between stupid. the teams, man. Look at this. Look at this. Yeah. <laughs> And, and again, this is oh, and this God. is a culmination. These guys have been trash talking each other for a while. Like the, you know, if you're familiar, obviously this is like Astralis's like thorn in their side. Like they just have a really hard time with Liquid. Liquid currently yeah. very dead team walking right now. Very dead team walking. We'll talk about it in the silly season roster part. So even funnier because after this match, Liquid beat them. Right, and Zipnix tweets, we just can't beat this fucking team, right? Um, so, you know, yeah. fun banter, and, you know, it. Counter-Strikers, you know, obviously I also spend a lot of time traveling around with not only talent, but a lot of the players, and, you know, like, this is, they're so good at this. Like, they're so good at the trash talk side of it and having some fun, having some banter, and leaving it right there in that hallway, right? That's, you know, no, no one gets mad over this yeah. shit, you know? And again, that makes personalities, <laughs> that makes fans excited of someone, or, oh, you're a villain. I don't like you anymore, Stewie. How dare you, you know? Like, yeah. I love that shit, right? But you can do right? this without, like, offending people, right? Yeah. I don't, no one's gonna be offended by by that, you know what I mean? Um, but explain this to me, right, guys, as, as someone who, I'd say has watched less and less Counter-Strike over the years because I've been busy with, you know, uh, other titles. 
I mean, they might be tweeting, we can't beat this fucking liquid team, but they got shit on by Vitality in that first round. Absolutely dumpstered. You know what I mean? Um, I, I obviously, no one's really crying about the Astralis era anymore. It's definitely, it's definitely long uh, since over, but this team seems to have more problems than just Team Liquid. Yeah, I mean, sure. You can't beat that team. There's other teams that you're having a hard time beating. Yeah, I mean, obviously, Astralis is not what they were. Uh, the era mm. team has been replaced. We'll be talking about Navi uh, a little later in the broadcast. They obviously are now the team to beat. Um, long time coming, long time right at that edge of the team to beat, but not with the wins. And now they're just stacking the fucking victories up, which is awesome. But, um, and again, talking about Counter-Strike, you know, talking about uh, uh, the players and how they react and whether it's trash talking or whatever, um, you know, again, we've got a lot of dead teams. We've got a lot of craziness going on. We're going to get into all that. Uh, but I, I think what we want to chat about is, is Apex. And you wanted to talk about this, this interview of his a little bit, right? Mm. Yeah, let's roll it. This last month, are you proud? Of course I am. It's been three years we, we worked together with this team in... Personally, it's something special to believe such people like uh, like Remy, like uh, Ekstaz. Yeah, that's it. Dan, thank you. Look after yourself. An incredibly emotional time for Apex, being the pioneer, the in-game leader of this roster. And now the rumors are saying, you know, a lot of these members are going to be departing from this squad that he's handcrafted himself. So I I'm not surprised that he he's incredibly emotional coming off this game. Uh, again, I mean, pff, right here. wow. Mm. Uh, well, Scott, here's the thing. Like, I have I've interviewed Apex a few times, especially back yeah. during his tenure on G2. We're talking about a what 12 year veteran of, of the game, and uh, someone who, in fairness, we've definitely seen the emotional side from him. But normally, he's quite stoic. Like a yeah. lot of uh, the the French players are. Like, uh, for example, Happy. Right? You you wouldn't always get <laughs> you know a ton out of him in an interview. Or you know, could say the same of Scream when he was on that team, right? These guys were pretty, pretty together. But you could see just how much uh, this had meant to Apex, uh, and these interviews are hard to pull off, you know. So shout out to Banks there as well for uh, you know displaying some real humanity in that particular moment, because I know a lot of interviews, interviewers may not sort of know how to react there. But man, I mean, this this is a. Uh, you know, pretty sad to see that some of these teams obviously are. We already, it's weird, right? Coming into a tournament knowing that this team is, you know, already falling apart. It it it, it feels a little weird, and and obviously, yeah, sad. And you can see uh, Apex really demonstrating that. So, yeah, I got a bit choked up watching. I'm not gonna lie. Maybe Freya did too. I could hear the 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 the, 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 the tremor in her voice. Can't yeah, blame I mean, her. Really, I mean, it's hard not intense. to, right? Like, I mean, uh, and again, Dan's a great guy. Um, been a champion of Counter Strike for several versions of Counter-Strike even. So, so, you know, awesome dude. Um, and again, this is the ying to that Stewie clip in the tunnel, right? The fun banter, the emotion of a player about to play and ribbing each other. And then the aftermath of not only a defeat, but a defeat that meant the last time he gets to play with some of these guys, maybe ever. Um, the, 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 you know, the, because they were on a nice little, like, dead man walking run too. They were beating people they shouldn't like they, and they were playing out of their minds because it didn't matter anymore as well. Again, caught him in the end. So like all that just again captured there for us to consume. Um and and who uh, and again he's a hell of a guy. We do a lot of stuff with the PA together. He's one of the and again just super solid dude. It'll be interesting to see what that how that team reforms. Um a lot of rumors of who's coming um you know some are staying so yeah shout outs uh, you know to apex and yeah. vital and, and i do want to i'm glad you brought up james because i wanted to bring up james you know i i'm also you know i i used to be on air talent i guess i am for this show but like uh, people's jobs are to do their jobs right so i often won't like pat you on the back just because you did your fucking job right um but this guy if you know those of us that are counter strikers that know what james has gone through in the last six months the man the fact he's even standing there with a microphone in his fucking hand right now um, is amazing. Yep. He's had a hell of a fucked up year. His wife passed away two events ago that he was at live. Uh, he soldiered two, maybe even three events, soldiered through it, came back for this. He's been grinding to try to get to tier one events. He's doing that now for multiple games. You know, does a lot of Wii Play stuff as well. And again, uh, salt of the earth fucking lad too, if you will. Um, you know, so many issues growing up, you know, not 
a silver spooner by uh, again jay's banks sweetheart so to see him go through this um and again to see him hug and then catch up to apex and there's no way james thought he was still on camera when he hugged him again right he thought that was an off camera moment when he was you know so again just shout outs to you james you've been killing it take some fucking time off and get yourself right if you need to because uh, i think he's grieving via working and that can bite you in the ass, too. That, that will catch up to you one day. Uh, so just take care of yourself, brother. Um, and yeah, so again, blast. Bravo, bravo, bravo. Let's get to how it ended. The big boys did it again. What, I think fourth event in a row. Navi takes the win. Um, they beat Gambit in the finals. Um, good match, but uh, again, when Navi's kind of on the game, they're kind of on the game. Uh, absolutely. Uh, you know, I think, and this has been discussed a lot, I think the topic of like an era, eras in esports has been brought up a ton. And I think it's really hard sometimes to actually declare an era until it's already over, right? Uh, usually, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's up for discussion and such like that, but it's really hindsight that allows us to, to make the final call on that particular decision. But I'm starting to think that we can call this one already. Navi, uh, putting it together again and you're yeah, right that this last map inferno not very fucking close uh i'll be honest with you it was like a it was like 11 yeah 11 rounds on the ct side for navi it was like 11 4 at half and i'm thinking okay i mean this is about it gambit have absolutely run out of gas but i will acknowledge though uh just uh, how impressive and incredible the cis are in counter-strike route now it is quite a sight to behold yes they are they are dominating uh, and, and again, I think one of the neat things about Simple is obviously he's been in the discussion as the greatest Counter-Strike player every year for many years. And that was the running joke. He's the best. His team can't fucking mm -hmm. get over the hump. They can't win a major. They can't <laughs> sure. consistently win T1 events. I don't know what happened to them during COVID. I don't know if it's just a combination of the players all gelling, him getting support when he needs it or... When he has a bad game, everyone is stepping up, but it's all working when it needs to work, right? It's one of those just lightning in a bottle moments. Astralis had a run for a while, gone, you know, and this is a nice run. Now, uh, to your point, uh, is it an era? I think it is. I th definitely think uh, who's going to beat them? We're going to see what happens with the silly season of who restructures with what. Um, but uh, on paper, who the fuck is going to beat these guys consistently? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. And um, I remember when Blade Sponge, went who's from gonna being beat a them? player on on flip side <laughs> tactics, you know, and then yeah. started being, you know, became a coach. This guy, you know what, like he was what uh, a, such a decent, reasonable human. Uh, I really enjoyed talking with him. And I think that, you know, he's been able to take this team to incredible heights. So great to see that turnaround from him as well. And I think like guys like Scott, guys like Boombler, I, I yes. seem to recall, were getting a lot of criticism early on, like during the doldrums for this team. But yeah, a true coming of age. And you're right, who is going to beat them, right? It doesn't seem like this team's showing too many signs of slowing down right now. This might be a, uh, me a real era and let's just cap this off with a little bit of uh, some stats to show you why we're talking about an era uh this will kind of put it in perspective for you how much they've they've done this year as a team um and then the blast standings let's go ahead and show that you just get an idea oh wait okay that's my bad I, I jumped jason my bad i love fucking with jason every so often are you on camera today jason are we gonna see you maybe not okay so there we go. Okay, so this is their year, is the right? Results. So shout outs to Liquipedia. Yeah. So all the yellow on the left, those are first places or first to thirds if it was a tie kind of thing, I guess. That Blast premiere was just groups. But all that gold is they won the fucking thing, right? So Jesus, right? One fifth place in there. Two seconds, the rest, they won their group or they won the whole goddamn event. So again, they're having a run. They're having a run. Now, I think the neat one I mean, is about halfway down, Intel... Grand Slam season three. What that means is they won four events that got them that million dollars. That wasn't a, an event. That was having to win four other events in a certain time frame. Liquids won one of those, and Astralis has won one of those. So now Navi's got themselves a Grand Slam. Uh, thank you, Intel, for giving that money. Uh, cool shit. Again, I don't know who beats them. I, I don't know, but it's also Counter Strike. Yeah, I mean, so fuck. This, this is this crazy. is huge as well, I think. And this is something that really kind of solidified it for me here as well. Now, the Grand Slam obviously does help uh, a lot, right? Obviously, that one million sort of thrown on the top here. But in one calendar year, the team's obviously taken over $4 million. <laughs> and uh, Astralis, obviously, back in 2018, had an excellent year as well. This, can I just... 
let me just put this out there. This is a calendar year in which we have lockdown, right? Where we have less of these events, presumably. Yeah? Yeah. And they still fucking beat Astralis' record during a time where this wasn't the case. So pretty hard to argue with that. Again, when the Grand Slam was first announced, I was like, ah, I was going to fucking win that. I mean, what? It's too competitive here in Counter Strike. We've had, what, three teams have sort of won it so far. I think Intel and, again, and ESL Scott, didn't think like, it was going to win it. And like, oh, fuck. Yeah, get fucked. Get fucked, guys. I mean, shit, you want to put that money down, Intel? That's no, right. We'll not the same teams That's don't fine. win consistently. It'll be all spread out. No one will. Carmack's like, ah, oh, fuck me. <laughs> Three million dollars oh, later. You think he's fucking oh, paying for it? No way. Oh, God, I can't hear him. Like, uh, we have another one, guys. Keep talking. All right, yeah, so Scott's going to pick up his IFE from the ground here, but this is some footage from Simple, who, uh, you know, again, uh, you know, he's always in the discussion of one of the greatest yeah, players. Again now. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I think of at least this era or of all time, I and mean, Simple, incredible stuff from him. And yeah. Scott, look, you know, I think a big part of what has allowed Navi to reach his consistency, it's not necessarily Simple, but the rest of his teammates really starting to get in lockstep with him performance-wise. But Simple has really never let his foot off the gas, right? Yeah. The guy's so humble, has fantastic mindset. He's got many, many years, but uh, I think, ahead of him as a, as a pro player here. And just, uh, you know, one of the uh, one of the most incredible Cinderella stories coming out of his region. Remember, his guy was discovered, what, playing Rank S, right? Just a, just a pug star turned into a, an international superstar. Yep. And then you start thinking, we, we skipped a major. We dropped a major during this whole thing, right? Yes. So they could have won one before the one they won. Who fucking, it's just crazy. So, and, and a great guy. I've had lots of conversations with Simple over the years at events. Super, super down to earth. You know, sure, he's got swagger in interviews, and but like generally a kind, solid, badass human being. Obviously phenomenal at the game of Counter-Strike 2. We've got a little bit of an interview. We thought it would be nice. He does every so often talk to us and bless us. So mm -hmm. uh, Frey and the gang at Blast was able to get some words with him after they won. Let's go ahead and listen in to Simple 2 and see what he has to say. I want to do a bit more, you know, but I don't want to do less. And I understand that I need to just play 24-7 like I did before. It's almost mind-blowing to hear that from you that you're concerned about, you know, not being good enough for your team. Yeah, just, You've just been head and shoulders above the rest. I don't I? want to imagine when I'm going to be washed up, so <laughs> I try my best to stay here, you know? Well, there's definitely no doubt in your determination coming into any competition. I just want to give you a moment to say anything to the fans that have been supporting you throughout this year and seeing you lift so many trophies coming into the end of it. Uh, where should I look? Yeah, this, this big one there. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Hello, operate, operator. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just uh, thanks everyone for watching. I hope uh, I hope you enjoy the CES in Denmark for the last two events, and I hope you enjoy the major. And uh, I want to wish you, your family, and your friends happy New Year and Merry Christmas. I hope you will do well. Just set some goal, set some goals for 2022, and just do it. If I did it, you can do it as well. I love. Set some goals, Mitch. Set some goals, Mitch. That's that's your goal. Yeah, I've got goals. You got goals? Uh, yeah, I, I definitely, uh, yeah, I've got a few of those. So thanks uh, for that reminder, Sasha. But yeah, <laughs> look, I mean, the guy is, you, you talked about salt the earth kind of people, right? Simple really is one of those. Uh, he wants to do more, which is uh, something that people kind of don't realize. But once you achieve your dreams, you have to kind of find new ones there. So credit to, to Simple for continuing to sort of aim higher there. And I think he still has a lot to offer, uh, you know, the, the scene in general. Uh, he's just, uh, like I said, a consummate professional, real superstar. He's grown up a lot, you know what I mean? We definitely had, there were definitely issues with some of his behavior early on. Like, let, let's not oh, sure. ignore that, but he's, he's, I think he's overcome that in a huge way. And there's no point dwelling on it or, you know, or, or anything because, uh, yeah, he's a, he's a real asset, I think, to Counter Strike in general. There are a few of these players, though, Scoots, that you could consider quote unquote assets to Counter Strike. One of them obviously made some interesting moves earlier on. Yes. Let's talk about Nikolai Reitz, of course, device previously of that Astralis super unit. The one that really kind of, I remember, they, they really talked about mental coaching and, and what yeah. helped them sort of achieve their era of dominance here. But, you know, he moved over to NIP and quite a shocking move, right? I relocated and also to do this. But, we're starting to hear some rumors about where he might be headed next. Yeah, this story broke um, and then kind of unbroke, I guess, if you, you know, depending on what you want to believe and where you want to think the, you know, the actual facts might be in something like this. But the, the story broke that he was keen to go home. He was, wants to return to Australis, return to the city, move back because um, 
part of his going to Nip was relocating. His girlfriend w- was in town where he was yeah. relocating, et cetera, you know, starting their life. You know, you, we always have to remember these people are human. They have lives outside of sitting in front of a keyboard playing a video game. So they have to always think about those things and what might be best for them. So at that time, you know, again, we don't know what – the story is that this is bullshit, by the way, that he ain't going nowhere. But it broke that he was keen to return to Australis. He uh, he broke up with his girlfriend, and he doesn't want to be there anymore, and maybe he's missing the vibe, doesn't like. But it, he's come out, you know, because obviously two sides of a story, three sides of a story. He's then come out because obviously all the – everyone picked it up, right? The sources say – Sure. It, as they do. It's their job, right? So – um, you don't make this kind of money and have this kind of fan base, and your personal life is going to be talked about. Um, now, if this is, I, I trust that the people that wrote these articles have some decent sources. These people that are publishing well, this shit—it's Luis Mira. Yeah. Yeah, they're not making the shit this up. This is not just some fucking random journalist off the off the street, yeah. Scott. So it's always where's that you know nugget of truth. So anyway, he comes out with, through a series of tweets. We just grabbed number three out of five because that's the one that basically sure. says this shit is nonsense. What you're talking about is nonsense, and me leaving is nonsense. So can we stop talking nonsense? Okay, we'll stop talking nonsense. I mean, we're we're obviously coming both sides of it. I don't know if he's leaving or not. I mean, we didn't. We're not here to be journalists and go research stories necessarily. So what'll be interesting is you know if he's having to cover, if he is thinking about it, if there is something happening because we've seen this with players, we've seen this with talent, we've seen this with team owners, we've seen this with game devs. Something gets leaked, they deny it. It ends up being true. Now, obviously, if why? What? What kind of world do we live in, Scott? Where yeah. I find myself trusting a journalist over a, over a pro player here? What, is this? Am I wrong? <laughs> is there something wrong with me? Yeah. I, no. No, I didn't mean it that way. No. Yes. There's something very wrong with you. Very, <laughs> very wrong yeah, with no, you. No, yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. You know. So, I, um, now, how these things telephone call and like spiral is maybe he was having drinks with some guys and we're like, oh yeah, I miss it here. Gosh, coming back would be neat. You know, gosh, and that, Uh that, you know, like it was some rando or he's pissed about something and he's chatting with someone like who knows where it started. But he's basically, as of now, quashed it, said ain't going fucking nowhere Um, because that would be huge. If you think if, if this story has legs, Nip paid a whole lot of fucking money for this guy. Right. So does that mean Australis buys him back? Did Nip pay the whole bill yet? Do they just go, hey, well, you know what? Just, you know. Give him back, and you know you don't notice the rest. Like it, it very interesting. Um, uh, and it, it bro- I guess also like we we like to talk about the topic, but then we like to talk about the ramifications of the topic and the bigger thing. And the bigger thing is a lot of people, I think, got upset that we're talking about Device's private life that he broke up with a girlfriend. That you know that these things are being discussed, right? This is private. This is between him and his girlfriend and his teammates and Nip if he's leaving or whatever. Now, private citizen Scott's like, yeah, man, let the guy have his breakup if that's the case and all these things. But like, just like me, when you decide to sit in front of a camera, when you decide to start putting your shit out there, you got to take it. You, you, like, you know, all pro athletes have to deal with it. All st- actors have to deal with tabloid shit, true or not. So I'm sorry that maybe this is a salacious, bullshitty rumor. But like mm. if, if these if, if if it's credible in the sense of the people that are writing these believe it's credible and they're writing it up, you got to let it kind of get you written up. Does that make sense? I know I'm rambling a little bit about it, but like, I, don't think well, we get mad. Yes, no, like, I don't think we get mad that it's being reported on that he might want to go home. Listen, uh, Scott. I mean, I'm just a TV, so don't take don't take you know my opinion too far. Uh, but I honestly look. Yeah, I think Device probably knows exactly how this news got out. I reckon he mm. can probably trace a potential. Unless it's just completely made up. But why? I mean, and again, like the guy is like a pretty you know recognized journalist. Um, he probably can trace back what happened here. You know, what I mean, I understand if he's not going to be like, yeah, well, like I said some stuff I shouldn't have or whatever, but. You know, I don't think that I think he knows why why this sort of happened. There's nothing wrong with saying these these rumors are not, not true. That's fine. Um I don't really have an issue with him saying any of that. And yeah, like I think if I was in his position, I'd be like kind of mad that people are prying. But also this guy is posting pictures of him looking sad on social media. There's actually a great picture of like banks on stage and then like a divider, and he's sat on the other side of it with like his head in his hands. It's on his it's on his Twitter. And you know, he sort of says, oh, I've been having a really tough time lately, yada, 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 right? So, and look, you know, it, it's not that much of a stretch for people to assume about his relationship, no. right? They, they relocated, things didn't work out. 
that's fine. You know, device is choosing to share some aspects of his personal life and his own struggle. So, you know, that, that's not going to quash people, you know, sharing rumors about him, you know, but, and this is his decision. You know I mean? He's putting yeah. this information out there. So I think it's fine. I think, you know, NIP probably would have been like, hey, listen, we haven't talked about this. You might have had a discussion with some guy at a bar, then this got out or whatever, but, you know, we're not there yet. So maybe shut this down for the sake of our team because your teammates probably don't feel great about there being rumors of you having lost faith in this team while you still have to play with them. Because it's a trust thing as well. Yeah. You know, if you're if you're playing on a team with someone and you hear these rumors, like it will definitely affect how you feel about them, even if you don't say it, even if it's only minor. It's in the back of your mind for sure. So you have to be pretty responsible uh, when you're playing at this level for this kind of salary. Yeah, and, and again, it's probably more of a case of like device himself gets it. Like he's this is what he signed up for. So rumors, true or not, or are things leaked. It's the nature of it. I think. I guess what frustrates me is the people that are more that are that get angry on his behalf. How dare you talk about his private life? Well, uh, he's a public figure. Like, like it, it is the world we live in. Um, Sorry, you know why are people being funny about that? Like, I don't think anyone. If you okay, don't okay. You should be held accountable, even if you're some random egg on Twitter for like harassing him directly about this, right? Don't do that. Like, you're you're a cunt if sure, you do that. Sure, but. If you're like, what would people saying? No, stop discussing with each other in a in an open forum about, about or something. What, what, do you, what, what do you want? That's what Twitter is literally for. Yeah. Twitter and Reddit are designed for baseless speculation. That is the underpinning fundamental of their platform. Yeah. You can't get mad about that. No. You cannot use Reddit and then on the other hand decry Reddit for being used for its intended purpose. Sorry, just fucking let it go. <laughs> you know what I mean? Go, go for a walk. Touch some grass. Holy shit. Touch grass. I need some grass on my desk. All right, let's move yeah, on. There's no grass in here, by the way. It's kind of industrial. Oh, I there's know. a tree out the back there. Maybe I can get a patch of grass outside, in my yeah. Aussie corner. We got a fake Christmas yeah. tree for the holiday we'll up there it. in the corner. I decorated the yeah, warehouse nice. for I you, like too, that. and you didn't, you didn't show up. I don't know. Did you see your oh, Aussie you ball behind you? You have an Aussie yoga ball now. Yeah, I did. We, we did that for you. I kind of like know? that. I don't do I don't do yoga. I, I mean, that's that's kind of... You know, it doesn't really play into my sort of a toxic masculinity image kind of thing, but I'll, I'll take it. It looks hey, cool. Um, toxic masculinity is a little later on the run of show. We're not quite there yet. Oh, Thank sorry, you. sorry. Thank you. <laughs> we'll get there. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> that worked out well. All right. Um, Hi. Continuing on rumors. the rumors. rumors slash not rumors news in the world of Counter-Strike. So back to the Stewie story where they were talking mad shit in the tunnel and having good times. What we do know is now confirmed because Joe Steve, the manager of Team Liquid's Counter-Strike team made a video. We do now officially know that Grimm, Stewie2K, and Fallen are no longer in the liquid active roster. Uh, so they will be leaving. Uh, there's all sorts of rumors of where they might be going. Con confirmations of those are not accurate yet in the sense of like announced and signed and stuff. Um, but again, Liquid has lost three of their core. Um, and Alige has become one of the team owners. He's invested in the Liquid, so he ain't going nowhere. Um, Equity, baby. That's which, how you fucking get out of esports, by the way, without being destitute, without a college degree. Very interesting. Equity. We, we need to add this topic because we it, we, ran, we ran out of time this week, but I think the idea of players owning equity and the good and the bad of that is a really n interesting conversation. Um, but yeah, more power to Hitbox. And I think it was, no, Hungerbox and um, Hitbox TVs later in the show. Yep. Hungerbox and uh, Elise. Mm -hmm. and I think there was a third that bought in. But anyway, unrelated. Um, so again, Silly Season has officially started. If you're you know not really familiar with Counter-Strike, we are now entering our winter break period. Uh, roster locks for the last event are locked. Um, so teams are now starting to figure out what the hell they're going to do next year. And often, not all contracts, but a lot of contracts are calendar year. So they're also ending December, starting back up in January. Um, so uh, uh, lots of crazy stuff going on. Um, Stewie is rumored to maybe go to EG. Grim, maybe. Uh, this is where I get a little lost on the latest rumors. Our expert in the in the control room, Tyler, might have to chime in. Um, but I think what's kind of neat is we, you know, we we go in the, North America goes through this thing of like NACS is dead and all the team owners suck and they hate Counter Strike. Then they love Counter Strike and Counter Strike is going to win again and NA is going to do well. And then you know it's it's this constant thing. So we're on the upswing now, right? We were, we had this huge valley, tons of teams quit, a lot of people folded, a lot of people went to Valorant. Well, now we got complexity rumors that they're either going to go after Copenhagen Flames 
or they're going to sign this North American kind of trio, add Grimm's, add Junior. So Complexity is looking to re-juggernaut themselves in a different way, so they're not staying away too long. Um, so this will be neat to see. Obviously, on one token, if they pick up Copenhagen Wolves, they're a little bit more geared towards closer to Tier 1, top 20, top sure. 30, starting right out. Um, but a European roster... If they go this extra salt, they are the love of North America. They're supporting the extra salt guys that have been just fucking grinding. Um, and they're kind of waving that NA flag. They are an NA team. When they was the do last time Complexity were like a, a, a top, top CS team? How long has it been? Well, I mean, they tried. Um, I mean, top, top would have been. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Top, top. Yeah. Jason just chimed Roll in our year 2006. Um, they never hit their stride in glow in that sense, right? They tried a few times, they stumbled a few times, um, but then it started getting really expensive, right? And they didn't have the money. And then they decided to go for it, spend the money, juggernaut, when they became a Dallas Cowboys company. You know, they got facilities in Frisco. That's what I was going to bring up. Like, maybe this extra salt, maybe this North American team would move to Dallas, would train out of there, would try to get that going, whereas Wait, I doubt the Wolves are coming over. is fucking... Isn't this what Jason Lake was like? Yeah, I'm cutting the team because this isn't good enough. Didn't he just like fucking go public about that? That he oh, was like oh, not yeah. happy with it. Like, oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> this guy's cut from the same cloth as Hastro, man. These guys, these OG guys, like they're they're fucking they're rustic. You know what I mean? They're yeah. They're let's build a, a juggernaut. Prickly, curmudgeonly, and they're just yeah. Let's build a juggernaut. I mean, I would say that you know, good. Understanding of good optics, no pun intended, and you know how to sort of work a PR spin with an esports team was not part of the requisite skill set back in their heyday, and they have not necessarily adopted that skill set since then. I remember seeing this, and I was like, "But come on, mate! Like, Jason, really? <laughs> I yeah, guess he just well, wanted to show his fans like some real transparency, but it never comes off well when like you're you're talking a little flippantly on social media about people's livelihoods. It's just." Yeah, I did, yeah, it didn't. It didn't. I uh, didn't kick off for me anyway. Yeah, I mean that was a brutal tweet because he did it moments after they lost, and like the players were pissed. Like it was, Sorry. it was brutal. Now, now keep in mind the juggernaut he tried to build that he ended up not being able uh -huh. to build. COVID hits, right? So he talks his mad sure. fucking trash ego. Let's go. Starts to build the team. Oh, God, starts this. to build the roster. Going down the right path. COVIDed separation of players all half go to europe some don't want to live in europe anymore so like it's it's kind of like cloud nine building the colossus the we like i want to judge these things harshly i really fucking do you all know me right but like you got this covid thing that kind of fucked both these projects in a way that we just don't know sure. what would have happened if the rosters henry wanted to build could have succeeded and ground in a facility and worked. And we don't, same thing Scott, with, with the juggernaut. If you're going to be charitable about that, you have to be charitable about Flashpoint, motherfucker. Because that's the same thing. That's the party line they pushed as well. They obviously, COVID kind of scuppered uh, a lot of their plans. And, uh, you know, that's why they were. I was uh, exactly charitable. I was charitable. Right Go watch when I did the show by myself, <laughs> man. I was all over being nice to those fucks. Um, yes, those fucks. <laughs> Um, uh, and I gave them the benefit of too many fucking doubts, um, along the way. Anyway, so that's some more roster stuff. I'm looking at my run of show to see where we're at. Okay. So now, yeah. So now that's kind of the roster stuff. And again, if you're a Counter-Strike fan, you're well aware of this shit. Um, there'll be plenty of shows that are covering rosters, YouTube stuff. Keep an eye on that Reddit. It's going fucking nutty. Um, and yeah. it's very interesting to see how, how it'll settle out for 2022. Um, going to be excited again. Who's going to beat fucking Navi? Who's going to beat fucking Navi?